doorstep. It created it. You saw that? A burden of story comes to me from glory. I gave his life on Calvary to stand the rest like we. A girl about his glory, of his blessed blood upon me. And I repented of my sins and won the victory. And all victory in Jesus. My Savior, forever, is on me and on me with his redeeming love. He loved me and I knew you, and all the love is still in me, my spirit, till victory made me a cleansing flood in a world of power. His healing of his prison fire, revealing I made the way to walk again and cross the road to see. And he did just but in the road, my spirit, I did no big test of heaven, did no big story. And all victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever leaps on me and brought me with his redeeming blood. I knew you, and all the love is to you, he loves me. To victory beneath the cleansing flood. For the God of Benton is still for me. The glory and the hurt of God, the spirit of gold, beyond the crystal sea. About the end of speaking, and the old redemption's unseen. And so sweet they all sing a fair of song and victory. And all victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sold me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew you. And all my love is to him, he must be to victory beneath the cleansing love. Amen. The next election will be number 535, Glory Land Way. 535, Glory Land Way. I have to sing this song with that scripture reading in prayer. Glory to my own way. 535. All that. I'm in the way of God in time and way. And I'm in the glory land and way. And tell me the world that Jesus came to day. Yes, I'm in the glory land and way. Never 
Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, bow to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we have the bow, thanking you for allowing us to rise and see this blessed day. We thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. We thank you most of all for Jesus, who came and died for our sins. If, if we obey your gospel and remain faithful, we will live with you throughout eternity. Word side and adequate. We just want to say thank you, Father. Father, we pray that you will watch over sick and shed and continue to bless them and heal them, Father. And pray that you restore them back to them. Help that they'll be able to come back and worship with us again at the next meeting time. Father, we pray that you forgive us of our sins when they have been in work for us. We pray for those who strayed away, praying that you continue, Father, to give them time and space to come back and recommit and rededicate their lives unto thee before it's everlasting and too late. Yeah. Father, we pray for our world leaders at this time, praying that they would use your word as a guide that there will be peace throughout the world. And definitely, Father, that they would do things to promote peace and not war. Father, continue to bless us here at Brook Chase, praying that we will be a light to this community. And people will know that you're your disciples by the love which no one toward another. Jesus, bless for the elders, use him as he comes before us to preach unto us thy holy and divine word. Bless us and be with us. These prayers we do pray after your thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Our next lesson will be number 454, Rock of Ages. 454. <coughs> 454, Rock of Ages. 
of the latest plan for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from the river inside me flow. Be of sins of God for you. Cleanse me from this guilty heart. Not the labor on my hands can fulfill the Lord's intent. My sin, no less by law, would my tears forever flow. Born for sin to not atone, thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Let it come to thee for dress. Endless love to thee for praise. Thou lie to the mountain fly. Watch me stay. Now, if you want to place your mark on number 988, I'll be listening to my Savior's call. I'll be listening. You would place your mark on the number five. Number five. Now, if you've done so, if you would turn to number 604, I want to be ready to meet him. I want to be ready to meet him. And I have to sing this song from the elders who are coming to preach unto us the word of God. Six hundred and four. I want to be ready to be. All that. You may have your worldly pleasure, your silver and your gold. You may call upon the riches that this world can hold. But I'd rather have my Savior and with two countries stand. God wants to be ready to be there and the glory land. And I want to be ready to be the by God. I want to be ready to be him in the sky. For I want to be more like you and do this less of man. For I want to be ready to be there in the man. You may talk about your riches. Your diamonds and your pearls. You may gain the world for ages, but this is not the world. But the Savior is more precious. With him I take my sin. For I want to be ready to be healed and glory. And I want to be ready to be him by and by. And I want to be ready to meet him in the star. I want to be more like him than to his best of men. For I want to be ready to be him in glory. There is one thing I can boast of, salvation from the fall. I'm meant to have this glory, my father has it all. And it's why I'm shouting at thee, and know it is the man. For I want to be ready to be in the glory land. And I want to be ready to be here by and by. I want to be ready to meet him in the star. For I want to be more like you and do not less a man. For I 
Bible says first Peter chapter 3. We'll read verse 20 and 20. First Peter chapter 3, verse 20 and 'Cause with sometimes for disobedience, when once the long serpent of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein that is, that is few so that is eight souls were saved by what? The like figure where to even that prison does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to a God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And if I read verse 21 again, the light figure wherein to even baptism does also now save us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But, but by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Baptism does now also save us. It is Peter writing to the church, giving them an understanding of what God did in baptism. Let me remind you of the sermon last week, baptism, as I conclude that today. I was thinking how that, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about a lot of things, but I'll tell you, it's hard to find a subject in the Bible that is spoken of more than the subject of baptism. But it's going all through the Testament, even Old Testament, uh, Paul says that Israel was baptized in Moses in the sea. And God took Israel out of Egypt and led them through the sea through, uh, on dry ground. They had a wall of water on one side and another wall on the other side. And a cloud hovered over them with the water. And they were baptized, he said, in the sea and Moses. Throughout the Bible, baptism is just a it's, it's amazing how much the Bible teaches about baptism. But yet, as I mentioned last week, there are so many people that don't understand it, don't know it, and yet, it's, well, not yet, but, but there are folks who have helped people to misunderstand what it said. And so what I said, I thought, you know, we could just examine what the Bible actually says. And I believe that when you do so, you will conclude as I have concluded. 
I don't know how I sell it. That's the simple stuff. The problem is people have told them. See, somebody said that you don't need to be baptized, and from there it took off. And it's even even prevalent in our in our world today, in our religious world. And so I want you to look with me what the Bible says. If you hopefully you were here last week, if you were not, you can go online. And and, and that will be part one. And as I conclude today, the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse number 15, Jesus commissioned his disciples. He said, Go ye therefore. And preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. A direct command from Jesus to his disciples I want you to go into the world, I want you to preach the gospel. He that believed that gospel that you preach, I want him to be baptized. He that believeth and is baptized, he shall be saved. It's not a hard thing. And so what we did last week is went through to show you all the examples of what those disciples did, what they taught, and then when the people believed, what did they do? And as you go through the book of Acts, which you will see it, when the people believed, they were baptized. Why? Because that's what Jesus told the disciples to do. They were commissioned. And that's what they did. Now, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll start this telling you, I understand because I'm telling you it's a big old subject in Bible. And so, and this is for people I know, there's a lot of this is a lot of us who know baptism. So there's a lot of things I won't cover. Because I you know, I have to do a whole other lesson maybe too. But to conclude it this morning to help you with baptism, I want you to look first Peter with me. You see, it is Peter who is Jesus. It is Peter who is there with Jesus. When Jesus said, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. It's Peter that went with Jesus. It's Peter that's there with Jesus when they came with, before they came. But as Jesus went about doing all the stuff he did and taught his disciples, Peter was right there with him. It's Peter that was there when they came and they arrested Jesus. It is Peter who was there after the resurrection of Jesus, being taught by Jesus. It is Peter in Acts chapter 2, when the people said, Men and brethren, what must I do? Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. See, it's Peter that knows. And so here you get 1 Peter 3, and what Peter says is, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of war, while the ark was prepared, for God was going to save the whole world. But only eight people chose to be saved. God was going to save the whole world because the whole world lied in wickedness. And so God was going to save him. He told Noah to prepare God for the saving of the world. Noah did that, and yet only Noah and his wife. His three sons and their wives went into the ark. God rained down water on the earth, flooded the earth. Water came down, water came up, and flooded the earth. But Noah and his family was in the ark. And as the water came up and lifted that ark up, it lifted it up to safety, and everybody else drowned in the water. And God saved Noah and his family that day. And he did it by water. The water came down and he lifted that ark up and they were lifted up to safety. And it is Peter with his understanding that being taught directly by Jesus. He said, the life figure, what's the figure? It is water. It is water. So the life figure, just like Noah and his family, eight souls were saved, he said, by water. Y'all see that in my heart? Right. Saved by water. So the life figure went to baptism in water does not also save us. You know, the 
problem is that that folk would teach you stuff that ain't right, God. I just think that all right, God. But the Bible is right. Because it's Peter that said, what I'm saying, Lord, and it is the same thing that is saved you. And water didn't do anything to know it. But because of the water that destroyed the whole earth and everything and everybody in it, it lifted the Lord and his family up to save you. He says, the life figure. Baptism saves us. He says, now listen. It is not the putting away of the guilt of the flesh. So when you get baptized, he said, water doesn't do anything to your body. It's not going to clean your body. If you are dirty when you went in the water, you will be dirty when you come out. It's not the putting away of the guilt of the flesh, but it's an answer of a good conscience of God. It's about doing what God says. It's about saying that, Lord, I hear what you've done for me. I surrender. It is an answer of a good conscience to God. And so what, what, what Peter says is that baptism saved us. Let me show you, Peter was taught by Jesus, y'all. Right. Well, I want that in your mind, y'all. He was taught by Jesus. And so if anybody knows, Peter knows, in Acts chapter 2, it is Peter standing up with the rest of the apostles. And they said, did anybody know what must I do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. And the world tell you, and the denominational world, and preachers, and, and teachers, and rabbis, and preachers, everybody in their mama tell you, you ain't got to be baptized. I'd rather listen to Peter, y'all. Is that all right? Yeah. Go back with me, y'all, to Acts, where we left off last week, Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, the Spirit had told Philip to go join himself to this. To this eunuch who uh, had been to Jerusalem to worship and he was leaving it on his way home. And he was reading his Bible. And as he read, the Spirit told Philip to go join himself to him. Philip went and joined to him. Philip asked him, understand what you're reading. And he didn't know what he was reading. He was reading Isaiah 53. About Jesus. He was reading about Jesus. But he didn't know it. And he was reading Isaiah. And so he asked Peter, he said, Now, who speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? He was led as a sheep to his father. To the share. Yet opened he not his mouth. It is Jesus standing before Pilate. And part of the cry when Jesus to give an answer of himself to him. And Jesus never said a word. Philip took that opportunity to teach the unit. Are you got to this, y'all? He took the opportunity to teach the unit. He says, and Philip began at the same scripture, and he preached unto him Jesus. He prayed Jesus for Philip. Say, tell you, Lord. Verse number 36. And they, as they went on their way, they said, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hindered me from being baptized? Look, here's some water. How come I can't get baptized? That's what he said. He didn't say anything about how, about, about, about anything but seeing water. Say, so you know what? I want to be baptized. Now, if you got that in your Bible, just, just hold that. Go with me to, go with me to um, Ephesians chapter 4. Let me show you the significance of that. Because he says to Philip, he said, now you got to hear this, y'all. Philip, who was taught by Jesus. And the unit, listen, the unit wanted to know what he was reading, but he wanted to know more than that. He was reading, he was trying to understand. He was trying to get some rationale into what he was reading. And then Philip went to him. And if I tell you, the spirit knew that. 
That's why he still fill up on that too. You see, the puny wanted to know. He wanted to know what he needed to do to be saved because after he taught Jesus to him, he said, look, here's the water. How come I can't get that time? Teach me. And Phil stopped the human, stopped the chair. But the scene here in this water is interesting because it is after Peter taught him, or rather Philip taught him. In Ephesians chapter 4, in verse number 4, we don't have to read it, but if you're there, I want you to see it so you know it's, uh, that's, that's the Bible. Here's what it says in, in, in um, Ephesians chapter 4. It says, there is one body. So it says, understand this. In Ephesians 4 through 6, it says, there is one body. But if I start over, it says, there is one God. That's the last thing he said. But he said, there is one God. There is one Lord. There is one God, one Father. It's just one Father. One Lord, which is Jesus, and one Spirit. And everybody would agree, amen? And then connected that. But look, he intertwined all of that. What he said is there is one Lord, there is one God, there is one Spirit, but not only that, there is only one hope. He said, just one hope. So what's connected to the one Lord and the one Father and the one Spirit is the one hope. He said, there's one body, which is the church. There's only one church. He says, there's one faith. Now see, that is in your mind. So what's connected to the one Father, one Son, one Spirit, it's the one hope. It's the one body. And then he says there is one faith. That's just one faith. Ain't no such thing as your faith, my faith. Because what's connected to the one God, the Father, of us, all of us, is just one set of beliefs, one set of doctrine. You can't believe what you want to believe, and I believe what I, but they believe, and they believe, and everybody believe what they want to believe, and you can let everybody believe that by the that ain't by the So it's just one thing, one, one system of teaching. What that says is that everybody's got to teach the same thing. Oh, you don't hear me, y'all. That's what it says. And then it says this there is one baptism. You kind of blow me away, right? Because was connected to one God. He's telling me, listen, the Bible says in, in John chapter 21 and verse 25, he said, there are many things that Jesus did. There are a bunch of stuff that Jesus did. He said, I believe John said, if, if everything was written, the world could not contain this book. And then when you go back to chapter 20, it says many other miracles truly did Jesus, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe. When you read something in the Bible, I want you to know it's of vital importance. They didn't just put it there because there's so much stuff that they could have put together that the world can't contain the book. But if you read this, it's important. And connected to the one Father, one son, one Holy Spirit, one body, one hope, one faith is one baptism. And that ain't you saying, y'all see that in your Bible, right? And so here's the thing what it tells you is how important baptism is. And what I'm telling you is that man. Has, have, have watered down the Bible so much that you don't know what's wrong. We water it down so everybody can just, we just accept God, you know, we just, we just, just, just accept the Lord in your heart and your personal Savior and there ain't anybody. Jesus never taught anybody to do that, nor did the disciples of Jesus tell anybody to do it. You gotta hear me, y'all. 
nor did the disciples of Jesus tell anybody to do that. So you got to know where that comes from. It is men trying to water down the truth. Y'all sometimes, you know, listen, the Bible says in Hebrews 4 and verse 12 that the word of God is sharp, but it's powerful, quick, and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Sometimes it'll hurt you because you trust them so deep. Oh, you don't hear me. See, sometimes you might have to tell people what you've been teaching and what you've been taught all your life ain't right. We are watering that down, man. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. We are watering down. This is real, y'all. Because, see, people have come up in all kinds of circumstances where people have taught so many different things that it ain't the Bible. And because the truth is so hard, it's true, it's right, it's true, but sometimes it cuts. It's, 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 it is a, uh, a design of, of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. It divides. The truth will expose you. And because of that, folk water the truth down. You know? You might have to tell folks, hey, mama, what's wrong? Oh, you know, Jesus said this, y'all. Jesus said, I came not to bring, this say, folks, I'm not, uh, I, Jesus said, I came to bring a sword. He said, I'm going to put the folk in the household that gives the folk in the household. Oh, uh, true. I'm going to put folk at all against it. It's true, y'all. How can you tell people baptism is not important? It's like sitting God ain't important. Because in Ephesians 4 through 6, 4, 4 through 6, he teaches that there is only one Father, one Son, one Spirit, one hope, one body, one faith, one baptism. Now here it is. That one baptism is in water. That one baptism is in water. That's simple. It's in water. You see, it is Jesus who taught Peter. It is the spirit that told Philip to go join himself to the unit. And when Philip get there, he taught Jesus to it. And after he taught Jesus, he saw some water. He said, Why well, can't be saved? Oh, you got God have mercy. He said, What hinder me to be baptized? It's in water. And when you go back to Acts 8, 37, Philip stopped to share it. And this is what it says. He said, and they went down into go to read verse 37. Uh, uh this is, Acts 8, 37. The Bible says what? And Philip said. And Philip said. I'm leaving this all up. He said, why can't get baptized? In water. So what I wanted you to know this morning. First thing, listen. Baptism, the, there's just one. See, but what both will lie to you and tell you today. Now I'm talking about today. See, there was a time back when God used Holy Ghost baptism, but he ain't doing that today, y'all. Today, there's just one baptism. There's a whole other lesson on, on that, but this is easy. There's one baptism. And that one baptism is in water. Because the eunuch says, see, there's water. Listen to what Jesus did. He commissioned his disciples to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized in water shall be saved. Verse 37, Philip tells the eunuch, if you believe with all your heart, you can be baptized. He says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Verse 38, what he says, and he commanded the chariot, commanded the chariot to stand still. still. And they went both, and they went both into the water. Into the water. Both Philip and the eunuch. Both Philip and the eunuch. And what did he do? They went into the water and Philip baptized him. 
baptism, the one baptism is in water. But you need to be taught first. Go teach the truth. You know, because folks say, you know, I've been baptized. Well, what you do? What were you taught when you got baptized? Because y'all got, I, listen, listen, listen. I grew up in a Baptist church and I was baptized too. And if you would have came to me when I was old enough to come and you say, why were you baptized? I'm not. I'm maybe. Maybe I'd have told you because my mama told me I was supposed to. But the reality was, I told you I had no idea. Because you know why I got baptized when I was a little kid? I remember the baptism. I remember. Yeah, yeah, love, love, love. I'm country, see? Well, I ain't country now, but I'm country. <laughs> I grew up. They took, they took us down to where the, where the cows, where they water the cows. And they had the big trough. And, 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 and where, the, where, the, where the trough, where the cows come and drink water. And I got baptized in that trough. I remember that. I remember when God would hit my head, he would hit my head on the, on the trough, on the faucet. And if you look, when I came up out of that water, you say, man, what did you just do? Why did you got baptized? I would have told you to save my life. You see, what has to happen is that you need to be taught. Right. Just like Philip taught the you, you need to be taught. Right. And you need to be taught the right thing. The folks will tell you, yeah, you can get baptized, and you're going to get baptized, you know, but it has nothing to do with your understanding. Like the unit. See, you didn't have, see when he taught the unit, Proper understanding, proper teaching, here's water. How come I can't get baptized? And he understood the importance of it. Let me hurry and tell you, because I didn't want to hear my side. That's so funny. He understood the importance of it. He understood it needed to be in water. And then he understood it was a barrier. He understood it was a barrier. Go with me, Colossians chapter 2. Now, if you in Acts 8, here's what it says. It said, verse 38, it says, and Philip stopped the chariot. This is what it says. He stopped the chariot, and they went down into the water. Another country thing. See, I understand that. I understand that better than you know. Because, see, what I do know is that the, the water he saw wasn't a little puddle of water. It wasn't just a little puddle. It wasn't a little, a little pool of water. It was a river of water. You know why I know? Because see, I grew up on the bayou. And, 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 and on a nice sunny day, and you had disturbed the water, you could go out at the edge of the water and you could actually see through the water the bank. And so when you walk, you can walk out in the bayou on on the water, and, it, it, and the water real shallow. But the more you walk, the deeper you go. And here's what he said. This is what y'all see in your Bible. It says, and they went down into the water. That tells me that was water that was shallow on one point and deep on another deep. I've been taught that all my life. Don't get in that water because you don't know how deep it is. And they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Colossians 2 and verse number 12. The Bible says what? Buried him in baptism. We are buried with him. What? In baptism. In baptism. Go ahead and read. For in also, we are also we are risen with him. Risen with him. Faith is our wish to God. Romans chapter 6. And verse number three says, No, you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. Baptism is in water and it is a burial. And no matter, listen, who it is that's related to you or know you, and they tell you, My kid is getting baptized, I'm going to this Catholic church, and they're going to baptize their Christian and my kid today. I want y'all to come. It's your opportunity to teach him that ain't baptism. Because right. what they do is they take the baby and they pour water over his head and baptize him. That ain't baptism. It's a going down into 
and it's a coming up out of. That's what it said. And when they will come up out of the water, they went down into the water, they come up out of the water. That's what baptism is. Buried with him by baptism. It's just one baptism. And it's not Holy Ghost baptism. No matter how many people tell you that today, that's false teaching. It's just one. That one baptism is in water. And it is a it is a burial. Now, this is what Philip says. Or Brother Peter says. Baptism does now also save. Let me tell you what's connected to that. You see, you and I have sinned. People have sinned. The problem is, you got to get rid of your sin. Go with me to Acts chapter 22, verse 16. We read this last week. So what I want you to see it is it is Paul who it is is the apostle Paul who is seeking salvation. And God told him to go into the city. He told him what you must do. And the Lord sent Ananias to Paul. And Ananias taught Paul. You got to get it, y'all. Ananias taught Paul. And then he says to Paul in verse number 22, the back 16, he says, What? Well, and now why tearest thou? He said, Now why tearest thou? Arise. Arise. Be baptized. Be baptized. And wash away thy sin. And wash away your sin. I want you to be baptized and wash your sins away. And he says, What? Calling on the name of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6. Go with me there. He says, Baptism washes our sins away. It cleans us of all unrighteousness. That's why you are able to be saved. When you go down in the grave of baptism, it actually cleanses all of your sin. It washes your sins away. Now that scriptures talk about it. But 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 9. 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 9, the Bible says what? No, you not. It says, no, you not. The unrighteous. Now, what you got to see, if you read chapter 6, if you read chapter 6, what was happening in the church is brother going to brother with each other, to, to the law with each other, and we can't solve stuff among ourselves. And what Paul said, that is the worst in verse number seven, eight, he says, There is a fault among you. He said, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Unrighteous folk ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. Read what it says. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. By the fornicators. The fornicators. The and he began to name all of those sins. None of those people who've done these stuff, he said, that's doing these stuff, brother, doing this thing. None of them will inherit the kingdom of God. And then when you get to verse number 11, he says what? And such was some of you. He said, y'all did. He's talking to the church. He said, but y'all have done some of those things. Y'all are guilty. Amen. Anybody not guilty of some of those stuff? We all are guilty of that stuff. Yeah. All of them. But here's what he said. Read. But ye are washed. He said, you. He said, and such were some of you. But now you're washed. What he said? But ye are sanctified. You are sanctified. But ye are justified. You are justified. In the name of the Lord, name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. It's how we become justified. Peter said, by, by, but we are, what is it? Baptism does now also save us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He justifies us. We are washed, and because of Jesus, he cleans everything we've ever done. It doesn't matter how many times you sin. It doesn't matter how great your sins were. He can speak of you and say, and such were some of you. So now you are washed. What baptism, going down in baptism does, it cleanses us from all those sins, everything we've ever done. That's why it's so important. 
That's what the eunuch understood. You mean to tell me I can get everything clean that I've ever done? Here's the water. I want to be baptized. You see, people who don't understand the importance of baptism, they will fight against it. But when you understand it, you say, hey, I want it. Because you're telling me baptism is going to cleanse all my sins of my Again, Romans 6 and verse number 3 says, Know you not that so many of us have been baptized into Jesus Christ or baptized into his death. It is John chapter 19 when Jesus was crucified. And the soldiers came to Jesus. And the Jewish, well, but the Jews have always done. If they crucify somebody, they, they, they put you on the cross, they will not leave you on there through the Sabbath. So what they did for all the folk that didn't die, they went around to them. And if you were on the cross on Friday evening and you were not dead before Sabbath, they took something and they broke your legs. So you will speed up your death. So it says they came to Jesus. And they saw he was dead already. And they break not his legs. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced the side. For we came there our blood and water. You see, it is Jesus who shed his blood in his death. And Paul said, we are baptized into his death. Therefore, we contact his blood. Go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 5. This idea that I can get all of my sins washed away. Man, if somebody tell you everything you've ever done can be wiped out. What you want to know is how can I do it? It's through baptism. Revelation 1 5, the Bible says what? And through Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ. The faithful witness. The faithful witness. Together the dead. Go ahead and read. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Go ahead and read. And to him that loved us. Him that loved us. And, and what he did. And washed us from and our sins. And he sin. washed us from our sins. Paul, oh, get up and be baptized. Washing away your sins. All of those sins that everybody's done, you have done. But you have been washed. What he said. He yes. washed us from our sins. What? His own blood. His own blood. Lord, listen, y'all. It is in baptism that you go down into the death of Christ. Where he shed his blood. And you contact that blood. And it cleans you from everything you've ever done. And yet somebody tells you that is not important. I'm telling you, there are people who part from you because they watered down you with that. Now, let me finish with this. This idea, see, see what's that's that's what's connected to what Peter said. And what else is connected to what Peter says is this understanding of being saved. You see, before I can be saved. I gotta have my sin washed away. Because God's not gonna save me in my sin. He said, I tell you, Nate, it's just, you shall die in your sin, and where I am, you cannot come. So we cleanse us from all our sin. But after that happened, it does something else. Go with Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 26. When you read Galatians chapter 3, here's what's happening. They were trying to be justified by the law, not by Christ. I ain't got time to tell you all of that, but when you go through Galatians chapter 3, when you will see it, he's telling them that the law was the schoolmaster to get you to Christ. And after Christ comes, we don't need the schoolmaster anymore. That's right. So you ain't saved by the, by the schoolmaster. So you don't have to worry about the law. The law was just there for a period of time. And then when you get to verse number verse 25, what it says, it says, But after that faith is come, 
Master then, free. We are no longer understood, Master. No longer understood, Master. Free. For you are all children of God. We are all the children of God. By faith in Christ. How we, by faith, go and teach all nations. He that believes, faith. That's what it says. Go ye therefore, teach all nations. He that believeth, faith. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Bring for as many of you, for many of us, have been baptized, that has been baptized into Christ, into Christ, have put on Christ. We put on Christ. This idea that as many of us have been baptized into Christ, we put on Christ. In Romans six and three, say, "No, you not there's so many of us was baptized." Just like here, he says we were baptized into Christ. But he says something a little different. Go with me to Titus chapter 3. But don't miss this because I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, to, to not get it. Go to 2 Timothy 2, verse number 10. Here's what I want you to see. If you go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 3, it says, All spiritual blessings in heavenly places are in Christ Jesus. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places are in every spiritual blessing that you and I can, could ever obtain is in Christ. You know, if somebody told you, if you are standing outside and somebody told you that, hey, whatever, whatever it was, it could be anything, something that you desire. Let's say you need money, we do money. Everybody needs money. I want money. Is that all right? They say, hey, look, they got a million dollars in that gym. And you said, I want the million dollars. Does anybody not want the million dollars? That's why I know I'm talking to the right. It says million dollars in that gym. Can you get the million dollars if you don't go in the gym? See, in order for you to get salvation, in order for you to get spiritual blessing, you got to go where the blessings are. You got to go where they are. 2 Timothy 2, verse number 10, the Bible says what? Therefore I do all things. He says, Lord, talking to the church, he said, I do all things for the elect's sake. Free. They also, they also obtain they what? What they obtain? Salvation. He says, so that they might obtain salvation. That's what we're looking for. Which he says what? Which is in Christ Jesus. Where is it? Christ Jesus. He's in Christ Jesus. Salvation is in Christ. It ain't outside of Christ. If you're standing outside of Christ, no matter how religious you are, no matter how good you are, it's like standing outside there and say, you just don't know. All the folks running there trying to get that million dollars, you don't know how much I need it. I need it better than anybody. And you're still standing outside. And you desire it, and you just dreaming about it, and you listen. Salvation is in Christ, and the only way to get it is to get in Christ where salvation is. Not just salvation in Christ. Keep reading what it says, Jason. With eternal glory. It's with eternal glory. With eternal glory. So here's what Paul says. Listen to me. And Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 26. It says, For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of us as has been baptized into Christ. We were baptized into Christ. Romans 3 verse 4, verse 3 says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ. We put on Christ. Every time somebody is baptized, they're baptized into Christ. The late uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47. Y'all know this. See, it is Peter that said, baptism now save us. Why are you saying that, Peter? It's because baptism. 
Baptism is the thing that puts you in Christ for salvation. Peter told the people in Acts 2, he said, they want to know what I got to do to be saved. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of the sin. Verse number 41, it says, those that gladly received his word, they believed the word, they were baptized. Verse number 47, the Bible says what? Praise in God. Praise in God. And have his faith with all that. And faith with all. And the Lord added to the church. The Lord added to the church. Daily. Daily. The people who were doing that. See, the people who believed it and they were being baptized, he was adding them to the church. Why? Because in, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23, the Bible says that Jesus. He said, husband, love your wife. He said, the husband is the head of the wife, even his wife, the head of the church, and he is the savior of the church. When Jesus comes back, he is coming back for the church. And everybody that's, that, that hear and, and understand and believe, that's willing, he is not, he is not the putting away of the good of the flesh. It is an answer of a good conscience to a God. I understand what God did. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to put my way back. I'm no longer going to live the way I've been living. I'm going to change my life. Y'all listen, listen, listen. I tell people all the time, y'all. I tell people, this is real, y'all. You can live a better life than the Christian life. Somebody don't say amen. Somebody don't. You can live a better life, live in a Christian life. Because what I learned a long time ago is God knows made me. God created me, not me myself. So he knows all about me. So what that tells me is he knows what's best for me. So I'm willing to renounce my life and live my life for him every day of my life. That's an answer of a good conscience to him. And when I repent of my sin, I stand up and tell the world, as Peter, as Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, and you would say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And they go down, we'll go down again the water and pray for baptism. You come up a new person, but more than that, Christ will add you to his church. You are baptized into Christ where salvation is. You can be saved today. Don't let nobody tell you baptism is not important. Everybody that said that had read nothing about baptism in their Bible. And the folk who have read it, they dismissed it. Oh, you don't get it. They dismissed it. Or oh, either they water it down. Because when you understand the purpose of baptism, why baptism? It was, it is, first of all, it's just one. It is in water. And you don't get, listen, it, it, you don't sprinkle water on folks to baptize them. You don't pour water on folks. You go down in water to baptize them. It is just one baptism. It is in water. It is a barrier. It washes away all of our sins. And it puts us in Christ Jesus, where our salvation is. I want to encourage you that you haven't done that, you need to do that. You see, life don't last always, amen. You know, I understand that more the older I get. And I hear about people I grew up with, uh, grew up around my age, younger than me, older than me, and they died. I'm not surprised because I'm like, we're at that age. I know it's more shocking when a young person dies. When you get around my age, you know, it, it's not that shocking. And you begin to put it in perspective. You say, that could be me. Life don't last always, y'all. And so if you haven't obeyed the gospel, you need to. But just as sure as you're living, you're going to die. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Just as sure as you're living, you're going to die. You need to die, you're going to be saved. 
So it is better to die in Christ Jesus than to die outside. So I pray God bless us all. I pray God help us. And we as the people of God can strive to do more for Him. But also, if you haven't been saved, you can do that. Make up your mind today, I want to be saved. We'll help you get in Christ Jesus. Hear the gospel, believe it, repent of your sins, confess to be Jesus to be thy son, and you'll be very good. Bring back to the riches for the mission of your sin. If you're a Christian, but you haven't been what God would have you be, I want to encourage you. Repent. <laughs> repent, confess, we'll pray with you. God forgive you. And all of us together keep working on our soul salvation. So if you stand here, that's it, make it known. Let's together we stand and together we sing. When the Savior of Six hundred and fifty send the light. Six hundred and fifty. There's a call from dreaming on the restless way. Send the light. Send the light. And there are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light. And send the Lord, and let's see God's souls so bright, let it shine from shore to shore. And send the Lord, and let's see God's soul bright, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the passion of the call to death in the light, in the light, and a golden offering that the cross be made in the light, in the light, in the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. And send the Lord, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Amen.
just to make an answer. So we uh, As we prepare our hearts and our minds for communion, let us focus on 324. We'll sing a verse of this song of the brother will come and lead us. 324. At last I did my Savior do. 324. And I say, lead and my Would be So we want to, again, 
very good understanding for those who have got the reading and uh, uh, they cannot be with us. Uh, and, uh, and so we continue to pray for you and in the way that we can serve you, please help us know. We're thankful for our visitors today who are with us, uh, especially if we do not share our religious convictions. We hope that the things that have been said done here will be a source of encouragement to you. Um, it, it will challenge you to, to, uh, to take what has been said, what has been preached, uh, and to worship and, and search out in the scriptures to see if those things are so. Uh, I really appreciate you, Brother Elvis, for challenging us each week with, 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 with great sermons that, that, that draw us closer to God. I, I was mindful of when you, as you were preaching, as it pertains to baptism, and even that the fact that um, your your teaching has to be followed um, along with your baptism. And I was reminded of Acts chapter 19, where Paul ran and took the disciples who had been baptized, uh, but yet they had only been baptized by John's baptism, so their teaching was incomplete. And I was Paul told Paul said, so they went back down in the water again. So the Bible is true. And, uh, and we just want to continue to, to point people to, to Christ and to their truth. Uh, remember, our uh, latest Bible class on Tuesday night is going great. Uh, uh, please, ladies, uh, take advantage of that opportunity. And if you need uh, uh, study material, please listen to uh, Lip Barry. I am. I had one of the ladies that's in the class this past, but let them know that that Bible class is one that is just such a source of encouragement. And not only to the ladies, but uh, you know, because what he tells us is that uh, our, our sisters are committed to the cause of Christ. And then our midweek Bible study, uh, please join in. We had a great number uh, this past Wednesday. We asked uh, for your participation. We had a good number. We want to continue for those numbers to increase. And so please uh, be with us. And then we, the benevolence ministry, we met on Thursday night uh, on Zoom also at six o'clock. We really had a really constructive, a really good meeting. And we're going to meet the next three Thursdays at six o'clock. And so if you didn't have an opportunity to be a part of it, we want to be a part of that ministry. And uh, 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 please uh, come and join us. Uh, you, you know, we, we, we're doing wonderful work. The church, through that ministry, is doing wonderful work. And we just want to do even greater work. And so let me encourage you to be part of that. Amen. Amen. Uh, are there any other announcements? Remember, to continue to be praying for our efforts as we wait for Cole to uh, to approve us and give us a pound of approval. For the great plan, uh, you know, the, the pandemic has wreaked havoc, and we are at the mercies of the court. We, you know, our, our, our uh, engineer thought that, that, that we would have already had uh, uh, sound and say uh, by the middle of last month, but, uh, you know, I talked to other architects, and, and, and they have other um, church plans that are sitting down and just waiting. But fortunately, we're at the, at the last um, segment of this, this process. And so continue to pray for us. And let's just continue to be faithful and God will bless us accordingly. Amen. Amen. There's no other announcements if you're staying. I close the song, I close the prayer. I will really have a close song and a close the prayer. And remember those who are not with us, y'all, for various reasons. Let's continue to reach out to our brother to encourage them. Uh, part of that meeting, the benevolence ministry uh, meeting, uh, we, we're talking about uh, sending cards uh, to to those who uh, uh, that would be uh, necessary with benevolence or just a source of encouragement. And so it's something for all of us to be a part of. It, so please be part of it. Our closing selection will be 525. He knows just what I do. He knows just what I need. My Jesus knows when I am lonely. He knows each pain. He sees each tear. He understands each lonely heart. He understands.
Amen. 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 Amen.